Next up, I have a huge crush on this girl. I'll say this in front of my wife. I love her. She is phenomenal. She has come in. She's dropped some very inspirational messages with my team. I'm really excited for her to drop some inspiration for you guys. Um, this girl runs a seven-figure business part-time, four kids at home, crushes it, and understands funnels and running a business as a badass mom. And I'm excited for her to share with you today. Amy Gregory. Um, well, we should probably start with like the least sexy number up there, which is 10 million in production, like meh. And this is the thing about my business is I think that transactions are phenomenal, but I actually think real estate is just a remarkable vehicle for generational wealth. And I could spend gobs and gobs and gobs of times in transactions, or I could know that I mastered it and I could move on to the next thing. So my personal production is about I run around $10 million a year in production. The sexy part of that is that I do it in 10 hours a week. So I want you to run the hourly rate on that. Take 10 million, get out your phones, like legitimately. There's, I'm not joking. I have four kids, I'll wait. <laughs> I, you know. I'm used to 16 year old boys, so this group room does not, like let's roll. Okay, take out 10 million, type in 10 million. Divide it by 52 weeks in a year. Divide it by 10 hours a week. What's my hourly rate? Oh wait, sorry. 10 million, run it at 3%, sorry. Okay, divide it by 52, it's over $500, okay? Now, if you're running a million dollar business, if you're running a business that's at a million dollar run rate, you need to be having an hourly rate that is north of $500 an hour. So when you're looking at P&Ls and spreadsheets, I'm not good at spreadsheets. I hired someone to help me with spreadsheets because clearly, I think that's obvious, right? I'm not great at spreadsheets, but I am really good at recognizing patterns inside your business, right? So if you wanna run a million dollar, if you wanna have a million dollar income, you need to have an hourly rate that is north of $500, okay? Keep track of your hourly rate and what you spend your time doing. So this is how I built without the burnout. I'm a mom of four, I work part-time hours. Um, my first year in real estate, I worked 10 hours a week. I was pregnant with baby number four. That was a surprise, well, not really a surprise baby, but kind of. Um, I had miscarried prior, and I decided that, okay, if I wasn't gonna have any more kids, I was gonna go full throttle at real estate, which is what I did, and then I ended up pregnant, huh? Um, it's phenomenal, I recommend it. If you're, on the, if you're on the fence of having more kids, have more kids. Um, best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, so, my first year in real estate, I brought home over six figures working 10 hours a week. I can narrow it down to that because my third baby, remember I was pregnant with baby number four, he went to preschool for 10 hours a week. That was when I worked. I just worked in the pockets of my day. I have always built around constraints. Um, I'm a national team leader. I'm at EXP. I run, I recruit in the top 10 of the company. I'm one of the top recruiters um, at EXP Realty. The math on that doesn't totally add up. But if you learn to leverage tools inside your business, the math actually does add up, and I'll show you how. I'm an online educator. Fun fact, I got my degree in elementary ed. Um, I'm a geriatric millennial, which is like phenomenal. <laughs> Y'all gonna wish you were a geriatric millennial, because you wanna know what? I can write a five paragraph essay, and I can also put that five paragraph essay on Instagram. Right, even better, I can write at a se second grade level because you do need to be writing at a second grade level. I'm good at that because I'm a mom of four kids. I'm used to 16 year old boys. I can convince a group of 16 year old boys not to go throw eggs at the teacher's house. I can definitely negotiate your deal. Um, I grew up on Instagram. This isn't my first rodeo on Instagram. I'm going fast because I have a lot of content to cover. This isn't my first rodeo on Instagram, okay? And I think that's always a misnomer. It's like, oh, you're so lucky. Oh, you're cute. Oh, you like showing up on video. That's bull crap. That is bull crap, and if you tell yourself that, you're the loser, not me. Okay, so here is, I know, it's rough being one of my kids too. Um, I'm, you think I'm joking. You should hear my 16-year-old son call people out on their bull crap. Um, constraints lead to creative problem solving. So, call your constraints your excuses, I don't really care. Constraints will always lead to creative problem solving if you allow that, right? So. Don't try to like remove your constraints and convince yourself, oh, it's not gonna work for me because um, X, Y, and Z, I only wanna work so many hours or um, I'm tired or whatever it is, right? Remember how innovative we all got in 2020? Yes or no, not yes or no? Yes. Yeah, we got really innovated, right? Because suddenly you needed to keep the lights on, you're like, well, shiz. I'm trying not to cuss as much. Um, 
Again, I have four kids. So these are my constraints, okay? I want to, be, I wanted to, and I'm not joking when I said this, Lindsay Carlisle, where are you? I told her this in 2019. I said, Lindsay, I'm gonna build a business that allows me to take a month off in the summer. And she's like, you're nuts. Who takes a month off in the summer that sells real estate? Anyone? I mean, like, that seems like a little bit, I know, all my powerhouse agents are like, well, we all are now. Um, I wanted to work between like 20, 25 hours a week. I wanted to drive carpool, eat dinner together four nights a week, weekly, date night. None of these things really play nice with real estate. Like, we get this thing, oh, I have to work 60 hour weeks. I can never go to the ball games. My broker told me that, you know, I need to be in the office from eight to five. And that, no, you're actually, if you're a mom, you should go to the park with all the other moms. Because trust me, before social media, it was your mom. Women are the original social network. <laughs> Trust me, I can tell you everything that's going on in high school, junior high, I know where your kids are sitting at lunch, I know who drove who, I know who did what on the weekend, because that is my job. My job is to run recon on my kids all day, every day, so that when I ask them a question, they're like, oh shoot, she knows, yeah, you're right, I do know, right? So don't try and remove your constraints. Constraints will make you creatively problem solve, which is the biggest asset you have in your business. Stop doing it like everyone else. Stop it, okay? Just stop. Stop doing it like everyone else. Okay, number two, know the game you're playing. So you gotta come up, take a 10,000 foot view of like, okay, what are the patterns? Right, initially, great, I'm gonna do transactions. I'm gonna figure out transactions, I'm gonna get good at transactions, but like, what's the next thing? What comes after transactions? Okay, so you gotta get into rooms with people that are like ahead of you in the game, so you can be like, okay, what are they doing? Why are they doing that? Not only what are they doing, but why are they doing that, right? Um, so the most important math I always say that you need to master is patterns, because it allows you to identify what's coming next. Is anyone questioning if spring is next? No, because it always comes next, right? You know the pattern of season, so you know what's going to come next. So when we look at real estate, we gotta get really up high and say, okay, great, everyone starts out working with buyers. Raise your hand if your first transaction was a buyer by show of hands. Raise it up, raise it up, raise, yeah, because buyers are easier to convert, right? There's a reason everyone starts with buyers. They're easier to convert, okay? So first, it's buyers, okay. Then you're like, okay, we're gonna move to sellers. Why do you wanna move to sellers? Because they're easier to leverage. Your hourly rate is better on sellers. It works better with my schedule, personally. I've got four kids, and in the last couple of years, when a house went on the market, you actually did have to go show it right then, or it was gonna be gone. That doesn't work well with my schedule. Does it work well with yours? Doesn't work well with mine. So you wanna move on to working with sellers. And then everyone's in the agent business. Have you noticed that? Yes or no? Yes, everyone's in the agent business, right? Because if, you ha if, you pro if you're good at prospecting deals, well then you can't possibly service them all, right? So then you need to get into the agent business and then you wanna invest. Okay, so this is kind of my 10,000 foot view. Now I'm gonna figure out some different puzzle pieces to like make that work for my schedule, for my constraints, for my lifestyle, for how I want to live. Okay, the pattern of growth inside of transactions, I focus on helping female solo agents build scalable businesses. That's my niche. Why is that my niche? Because every real estate conference I went to was very masculine, and I was like, eee. This feels a little intense, right? I also realized that, well, I'll get into that later. Anyways, when you come to transactions, you wanna increase your hourly rates. So how to do this, you increase your price point, you become listing heavy, decrease your commute, and increase referrals. That's it, that's it. I don't drive longer than 15 minutes to a listing appointment. Okay, then you need to find your opportunity. What's your opportunity? It's going to look a little bit different as it should. Because if everyone's doing the same thing, like when we look at marketing, if everyone's doing the same thing, imagine, think about the amount of content you consume every single day. It's a lot, right? It's a lot. And it all starts to look the same. Just sold, just listed, just sold, I don't care. You're not solving my problem, I am not registering that, right? So there's a lot of successful ways to build in real estate. Your job is to determine which is best for you and build it as quickly as possible. Does that mean you're going to be uncomfortable? Yes, 
Absolutely, pressure is a privilege. Don't forget that. So what does Zillow do? Zillow arguably prospects the most deals. So if you're a rookie, you should look to the pros to get ideas and iterate on them. So I look to Zillow. I mean, who's prospecting more deals than Zillow? I don't know. What do they do? They provide value to the end consumer, they collect the data, and they refer out the leads. Okay, that's what I did on Instagram. Major bonus, Instagram allows you to cut out the middleman of Zillow, drives profits up. Who wants to drive your profits up? Great, stop paying for leads. Um, anyways, you can also do this on any social platform. I use Instagram, use YouTube, use TikTok. I don't actually care. Pick one and stay right there. So many of you are like, oh, I'm going to do all of them. Don't do that. Don't. You're not. Okay? And here's why Instagram is fun. Instagram has a compounding rate of return. It lives forever. It's a portfolio of your work. Right? The reason I got on Instagram, fun fact, is I used to work with fashion bloggers. I had an online storefront. I would send them my stuff, and they would sell it for a percentage. Sounds like a similar business model, doesn't it? Don't we sell someone else's inventory for a small percentage? Just so you know, those fashion bloggers are freaking killing it. Killing it. And they would use Instagram, right? This was, guys, this, I'm going to date myself. This was literally 10 years ago. Um, and I thought, oh, that's interesting. I was already licensed. I worked for a home builder in college, so I had my license. Um, had my first kid in 07, which was convenient for the market. Um, anyways, so I saw these fashion bloggers selling other people's inventory for a small percentage using Instagram as a leverage point, and I told my husband, I'm like, huh, it's weird. No, like real estate agents aren't using it like that, and they should. They should. They should put House Hunter, they should put HGTV on people's pockets, right? Okay, I can take you through houses all day long in your pocket. You can walk them when you're convenient. Do you want to see the numbers, how this works, what the opportunity is, and then I'll break it down for you. So how I do 10 million in production, in, I can do it in like seven transactions. Increase your price point, be listing heavy. So these are all what the text messages look like. Um, 4.2 million, that's a three and a half million dollar listing that just is pending with a cash buyer. Um, they're gonna go and buy a rental property for 700,000. The four million one, they're in a two and a half million dollar house. They're gonna downsize to one and a half, right? These are how deals come in, okay? Then guess what else is really cool you can do on Instagram? Why don't you just like refer some deals? Because if you are now the knowledge broker for like real estate, what's stopping me from helping someone in Orlando move to Dallas? Nothing. Nothing is stopping me. And check your hourly rate on that. It's phenomenal. Here's my sweet spot. I wasn't sure if I could rinse and repeat this. So I called my cousin up. My cousin was my guinea pig. She was working as a transaction coordinator. She also had four kids. She lived in Utah. And I said, hey, listen, you need to quit your job as a transaction coordinator. That's how blunt I am. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. Anyways, these are all agents inside my powerhouse group, even better. These are their first years in real estate. First year in real estate, all working relatively part-time hours. Let that sink in for just a minute. Does that change your life? Yes or no? I, what? Yes or no? Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Okay, so here's a quick rule book for realtors. Don't worry, I'm gonna let you download my whole strategy at the end, so I'm gonna go fast. Follow these real books, rule books, okay? You do not want to be Walmart. Number one, you do not want to be Walmart. Stop acting like you have something for everyone at a price they can afford. Stop. So often we want to like, oh, I'll do any deal. No, I will not. I will not. I will not do any deal. I have no problem firing a client and being like, yeah, we're not a good fit. How do I know? If you're a dude that calls me the day after I have a baby because you're having like a little like scared fit of like, oh my gosh, I don't know what the happens on the inspection, we're not a good fit. That's not a reasonable behavior. I'm not working with you. No, thank you. Um, so stop acting like Walmart. Why don't you Google Walmart's profit margins and Gucci's profit margins? Who do you want to be? No, that wasn't rhetorical. Who do you want to be? You want to be Gucci, so be Gucci. That means you're going to have to show up. That means you're going to have to show up for yourself. You're going to have to create experiences for your clients that allow them to make really good decisions. That's actually what I'm really good at. I'm really good at creating environments where agents, buyers, sellers, teenagers can make good decisions and it's their decision. It's not mine. Whoa, I went ahead. Wait, where am I? Hang on. We skipped the whole part here. Okay, how do you do this? This is number one. Identify who your alpha client is and then gather more of them. Fun fact, I used Dan and Kyle as an archetype to figure out who my alpha client was because I thought, shoot, 
they're building really, they're not even in my market, but I'm like, they're building really big. How would, as an agent, how am I gonna compete with Dan, like a Dan and Kyle type business? Because I'm not building the same business as them, right? And so I asked myself, who isn't on their database? Who's not gonna be in their database? And I decided it was females ages 35 to 50 because that are affluent, because they, they protect their data. I go to Bath and Body Works and they're like, can I have your email? I'm like, no. I will pay you $5 more not to have my email address. I say no, right? And so I thought, oh cool, I'm gonna just work with females. That's who I wanna work with anyways. And in my micro market, okay, one is just looking up and seeing the patterns. In my micro market, I knew that females were the decision maker when it came to buying a home. I didn't read that anywhere, I just noticed that. And here's the gut check. No, there's like no, there is zero scenario where my husband and I are buying a house that I'm not all in on. There's zero scenario where that's gonna happen. Zero. You're all laughing because you know it's true. That means you're a bougie bee, okay? And I like a bougie bee, I'm one too, it's fine. Now, we might buy a house though that he's 50% on. If I'm all in on it and he's like 50%, he's like, I don't care. Why? Because where we live impacts me more than it impacts him. That's why. Females, then I did find out that women influence 91% of home purchases. 91%. If you're not talking to women in your marketing, you're missing the boat. You're missing the boat. It's just like with cars, like add more cup holders, duh. That's it, right? So know who your alpha client is and you wanna know who they are on social media and you wanna know who they are in real life. Good news is, is you can talk to anyone on social media, right? I'm not an anomaly in my friend group. Oddly enough, in my friend group, um, I would say more than 50% of us run seven figure businesses on social media in different industries. Let that sink in. The opportunity is huge and it's not going away. So your goal is to identify who they are, then gather more of them. You know how I got the three and a half million dollar listing? Because who calls a part-time agent to list a three and a half million dollar house? Oh, I hate part-time agents. Uh. I hate burnout agents because you're not paying attention, right? True or false? True. Okay, great. You know how I got the three and a half million dollar listing? I always have made a pattern of like, I do the right thing because it's the right thing. I don't make decisions based on my paycheck. I make decisions based on is that what is best for my client? Great, that is what we are doing. So, three and a half million dollar listing, their next door neighbor, okay? Former professional football player. You'd know his name if I said it, but I don't do that to my clients. Um, I was helping them look for a house. They found a, a make me move house on Zillow. They wanted to go walk it. I said, great, let's go and walk it. We went and walked it. They wanted to buy the house. Am I? I wasn't really helpful to them in their deal, right? Is it a good paycheck? What do you think? Is it, do you think that would have been a good paycheck for me? Yeah, but I kind of was actually in the way. At that price point, you have attorneys, you have access to people that can like sign the paperwork and move it along, right? And this player, he had done fix and flip, so I knew he, I said, hey listen, I'm gonna, you go, if you wanna buy this house, I'm gonna just step out of the transaction. You go ahead and buy that house. I'll sell your house. I said, you call me if you have any questions. I'm happy to consult with you on it if you need any help, but like, don't cut me into the deal at all. You just go buy the house. Okay, great. Guess, guess who lives next door to the three and a half million dollar listing? That NFL player. Now, had I stayed in that deal and made his life miserable and said like, yeah, you're gonna pay me. Now they can't get my name out of their mouth. Like, understand who your alpha client is and let, make it easy for them to share you. Talk about you in everything that you do. So all that's in the download. This is how you take the cold out of cold calling. Believe it or not, I do get on the phone. It's a misnomer that I don't. Um, so you want to take the cold out of cold calling. So number one, this is on Instagram. This is like a real snapshot of my phone. Create a value opt-in, right? So on a Saturday, I might go and walk uh, an open house. And I'm gonna go and walk something at a higher price point, because that's where I operate, I am not Walmart, right? I'm gonna go and walk two houses at a, a million and a half dollars, okay? And I'm gonna say, oh, which house did you like better, one or two? And then I'm gonna say, hey, if you wanna go and walk open houses, click this link, right here. That link drops right into um, my CRM. 
Okay, that's my CRM, so just like Zillow, I'm gonna collect the data. Cool. And then guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna call them. And you know what they do? Like, oh my gosh, you're calling me. Because it's not a cold call. They know me. I'm building relationships at scale on social media. I'm like, hey, this is Amy, what's up? I'm gonna go walk that house tomorrow, you wanna come? I just make it easy for them to say yes. I'm not like, hey, what are you thinking about buying? I'm like, hey, I'm gonna go preview that house. I have some other clients looking at it. You wanna come with me? They're out of town. I gotta go preview it, you wanna come? I saw you looking at it. Oh yeah, I totally love you. Okay, cool, I'll meet you over there. Done, all day long. Okay, if this was helpful, you can download it, it's free, it's a whole workbook. Hi, I used to be a teacher. Huh. Uh, it's a whole workbook. You can download my strategy. It will work for anyone if you do it. Someone asked me today, he's like, oh, well, how long does it take to build, to build Instagram? It's as long as you want. I don't know, how many at-bats are you gonna take? You get to decide how long you suck at social media. It's all on you, right? I'm not joking. Um, but this will help you map it out. Thank you so much.